Hello, fellow humans, and welcome to the Milk of Adhumla. This little guy, cute guy behind me, is called Dogor, and he's an 18,000-year-old puppy that was um, discovered last year. And I just became aware of him because I had done a video on dogs just a few days ago. And lo and behold, um, one of my favorite channels, PBS Eons, um, did a video on this little guy, Dogger, and also talked about the evolution, the domestication of dogs, and um, cohabitation with humans, which is what my video was about. So there's been a lot of videos and research about dogs recently. And during the great pause here, while we're all staying at home, um, one of the things that I've noticed is I'm spending a lot more time with my dogs than I have been recently, um, which I really like. And I've noticed some things about them. Um, my partner is, is very pregnant right now. And they've had some very um, interesting behaviors. Um, they can definitely smell something different. Um, I don't know if it's uh, my partner's pheromones or what they're smelling, but they, they smell something and they'll, they'll put their um, muzzles up against her belly um, where the baby is and smell it. And also one of the, one of the three dogs is she's, uh, she's about a year and a half um, old and she's a fixed female. And she has this little um, stuffed lion that she likes and she's been like nesting with it which is kind of a new behavior and it's like is is it the pheromones like what's going on here um so i'd like to do some more research and try to figure that out but anyway so i kind of wanted to do just a quick little follow-up visit about dogs and i promise i've been working on some other things um i've been working on a video about an ancient ancient potato species um, from the American Southwest, which is uh, very interesting. So I hope to get that up soon. And I'm also working on a slideshow, uh, just a, some of my favorite photos I've taken in the last five years, of my travels through um, Latin America. So stay tuned for those. So let me tell you a little bit about Dogger here. Uh, let me pull up my notes. He was found um, along the Ender Jerka River, in the Gurkha River, northeast of Yakutsk in Siberia. And he was found in the permafrost. And we're finding more and more things in the permafrost as the glaciers are melting and retreating. And we're going to find a lot more interesting things, I believe, buried in the permafrost. So he was buried in the permafrost and he was preserved really, really well. Um, they sent in. Uh, for DNA analysis, and the initial results weren't really conclusive. They're not sure if it's a, it was a wolf or a dog. You know, if there's only a small um, um, genome differences between um, domesticated dogs and wolves, and so they weren't really sure. Or maybe it's it's a hybrid species, a transitional um, um, species, um, and they're not really sure yet. Um. So some of the things that are interesting about him is he was he wasn't under any distress. He's about two months old, um, and so this this brings up a thing um, that I've been thinking about um, a lot lately is how far back um, dogs and humans started um, living together. And it, they're starting to push it back further and further. The initial reports from I don't know like ten years ago they were saying like 15,000, 20,000 years ago in Siberia. And then there were some theories about uh, multiple areas of, of domestication that maybe it happened a couple of different times. But with more research, that's not looking like the case. It's looking that like it happened once and maybe as far back as like 40,000 years ago. And there's been some discoveries. Um, there was a couple of... Um, uh, remains found in the Czech Republic along the Pred, Predmosti um, uh, Upper Paleolithic site in the Czech Republic. And um, one of the, the dogs was buried and it had a mammoth bone placed in its mouth. Um, it had been placed there. So it looks, and this dates to like 36,000 years ago. 
So if you're going back that far, 36,000 years ago, and people were burying the dogs and treating them in a special manner, like giving him his bone and burying him, they already had a very special relationship with these animals. Um, so, and then it brings up some ideas about, you know, why and how this happened. Um, if we're talking about the Paleolithic, we're talking about people that were um, semi-nomadic, um, gathering plants, um, perhaps even um, trying to propagate certain plants in certain areas, and hunting megafauna and, and other things as well. Of course, humans eat everything, and the idea of, you know, mammoth hunters is this very macho thing that all they did was hunt mammoths, and that's not true at all. They ate anything they could get their hands on, just like we do. Um, so the way that, that um, humans and dogs can can live together and how dogs my previous video talked about um, genetic and um, mutations and things that allow dogs to be hyper social um, wolves to change into dogs and be hyper social and how this this helped them to be able to live with humans and how you know my three dogs are like part of the family they're just like kids you know they're really not very much different than, than kids would be and it's amazing that an animal can do that. So a dog is a very special animal that, that can do this. And so it brings up some things. What was happening in these communities? And you, you think about um, Paleolithic Europe. Now, Homo sapiens weren't the only hom hom homos um, traveling around at that time. We also had Neanderthals and possibly Denisovans um, in, the same, in the same areas. Now, it doesn't seem like Neanderthals had dogs, had domesticated dogs. Um, there's a researcher, Pat Shipman, um, who has a theory that maybe one of the things that allowed Homo sapiens to win out, basically, over Neanderthals was the fact that Homo sapiens had dogs. And Neanderthals, it doesn't really seem like, like they had them. And, you know, there's also the... the name of the last video is dogs make us human and this is something that that i brought up in the last video too is dogs have this hyper sociability and have very very advanced cues you know if you really pay attention to your dog take it outside and see how it interacts with dogs it may at first seem like just this haphazard free-for-all but it's not they're reading um, very minute special cues from the other dog and they're processing social information at an incredible rate um, what's her name I want to pull up her name there's a researcher who um, writes a lot about dog cognition let me make sure I get this right Alexander Horowitz and she does that she looks at how dogs interact and all the social cues and things that they read at a very fast rate and are able to respond to and so maybe that's something that, that dogs definitely benefited from being around humans. But at the same time, humans benefited from being around dogs. And it's not just about hunting. It's not just about staying safe and hunting. Think about sociability and how dogs can read these social cues and how dogs resolve conflicts and things like that. And maybe dogs have had a social influence on humans too. Um, I talked about in the last video how Dogs portray some of the things that humans want to be and, and sometimes fail to, to be. Um, we'd like to be altruistic and resolve our conflicts in an in a intelligent, kind, compassionate manner. We don't always do that, and dogs do that more often than we do. A dog can fight, and then 30 seconds later, they're best friends. They resolve their conflicts very quickly. So anyway, I just wanted to show you this cute little guy. <laughs> Um, dogger and um, talk a little bit more about dogs. So I hope you like this video. I'm going to provide links in the description below to the um, PBS Eons um, video and um, their channel is great. I mean if you like this kind of stuff you should subscribe to them. I really like their channel and um, also to a couple of uh, news articles about Docker and some other stuff. So I hope everybody's staying safe, um, stay at home, uh, stay healthy, um, and let's not freak out. Let's, let's, let's um, look at this as an opportunity um, to grow and to maybe focus on some new things. And um, I don't want to uh, minimize, minimize 
um, the tragedy that this has brought to some families and people. Um, but that's life, and um, we've made it through tragedies before, and I hope we can feel compassion for our neighbors and people that are suffering and do what we can um, to help them and, and not fight and, and not um, be in conflict, and maybe we can really come together as communities. So I hope everybody stays safe and healthy and um, stay gold.